All right, y'all, welcome back to the channel and to some more turkey patterning. And today we've got another combination that we haven't tried. And it's one that you guys kind of suggested the last time we tested these shells. You guys wanted to see a choke in this constriction with these shells to see what would happen. So that's what we've got out here today. And we're going to find out if it actually works or if it doesn't. Because it really could kind of go either way with this combination. But as for the shells we've got out here today, I brought out some of the Kent Ultimate Turkey Diamond Shot shells. They are a 12 gauge three inch one and three quarter ounce payload of number four shot moving about 1310 feet per second and these were a very cheap turkey shell i want to say for this box of 10 i paid like 8.99 or something for them so these are definitely on the budget side and last time we tested them, they didn't do anything impressive necessarily, but they were plenty good enough to get the job done for you. Now, as far as the diamond shot goes, more than likely, it's probably some kind of fancy way of describing the lead that they use. It might be a little bit harder of a compound or something. Not entirely sure, but either way, these are still a lead number four turkey shell. But how can they actually do through today's setup? And speaking of today's setup, I brought out the Remington 1187 here with this choke. This is an old school Colonial Arms RCTK2, which is their extra full 675 constriction turkey choke. No special porting, no special straight rifling or anything like that. Just a straight up 675 turkey choke. And a lot of you guys wanted to see these shells put through a 675 because they are lead fours, which sometimes works. Giving them a little bit more breathing room can help number fours. But these are a cheaper shell, which also could mean they could benefit from a little bit tighter constriction than what we would think as well either way we're going to start here with the 675 today and see whether they do better or worse than the last time we tested them and based on these results i think we might be able to get a good idea of what they like and where we should go from here but as for the test today everything is the same as usual the turkey paper is set up at 40 yards We've got the chronograph so we can get our velocity. So we'll get you guys a view of the target, take the shot, look at the chrono, and then go look at our results. I really don't know what we're going to see out of these. It could be decent. It could be pretty bad. I don't know. So let's go over here and take this shot and just see what kind of a pattern they're actually able to give us. Okay, so that shell gave us 1334 through the chrono. The boss claims 1310, so we are a little bit above their claim, but still, that's pretty much right where we should be for what they're saying we should be at anyway. So I definitely don't think there's anything too strange to see up here as far as velocity goes. We are getting up there a little bit towards that high velocity turkey shell range, but if they pattern well, then that doesn't necessarily mean we're pushing them too fast. So let's go down range and just see what kind of a 40 yard pattern they were actually able to give us. All right, now we're down here at our 40 yard paper and this is what we got. And we absolutely have a dead bird here. There are two through the brain and what, three more down the spine there. So we would have absolutely gotten the turkey. Now our pattern might be just a touch off to the left. At least I think that's where our core favored. It's a little bit hotter just off the left edge of that bird, but still it gives us enough leeway to work with. Now looking at the pattern initially here, it's nothing I would call super amazing or super impressive for a turkey pattern. However, is it good enough to get you a bird at 40 yards with yeah absolutely i don't think it's as good as what we saw the first time we tested these through a 665 so these might be kind of the same deal as some of the other shells we've tested where when they're cheaper shells they might tend to favor a little bit more constriction than what you would initially think, regardless of the shot size. That might also be the case here. So I guess now we're gonna have to test these through a tighter choke as well to see what happens. Our core area here is definitely hot enough to get you a bird all day long at 40 yards. It's not perfect. There are a few little gaps and voids in there, but these are lead fours and lead fours can be very tricky to pattern and find the right choke for. And you really just don't have the pellet count to fill in those gaps and voids sometimes. But we do have a good amount of leeway with still having enough pellets to absolutely get the job done. Now around the edges, we definitely open up a little bit. You can see some larger voids in there as we go around these sporadic looking edges here. There's not really anything I call a fly it's all condensed into this one kind of overall pattern so it definitely has the ability i think to be condensed down into a little bit more hot or tight of a pattern
pattern with the right choke combination. So it's definitely a little bit more broad, a little bit splotchy around the edges, which is not entirely unexpected. These are a very cheap turkey shell going through a little bit more open of a 675. That is honestly pretty much the result that I expected to see out of these shells. I definitely think we can do better with the right choke, a little bit more constriction. I think maybe 660 might be the key for these. We're just gonna have to bring it out and test it and see what actually happens. But at the end of the day, not terrible all things considered. And if it's the setup that you had to work with, yeah, you could absolutely take a turkey at 40 yards with it. I don't know if I'd push it farther, but it would absolutely work for you. So nothing outstanding, but it would still get you that turkey. Okay, and here's the wad from that shell and just pretty standard, typical, very basic three inch shell turkey wad type of deal. There's nothing stuck down in there. It opened up almost kind of evenly. This one pedal up here might have peeled open a little farther, but there's no rips or tears, pinholes, anything like that. And it looks about like what I would expect to see with a shell like this going through a non-ported, non-straight rifled, pretty basic 675 choke. It looks very much standard, nothing special to see here. And clearly with the way this wad looks, we can take it down quite a bit still in constriction. So nothing too special to see here as far as the wad goes. All right, y'all. Well, what did you think about that pattern right there? I'd say it's pretty middle of the road. It's definitely nothing spectacular, but it's far from the worst we've seen as well. And it would absolutely be good enough out to 40 yards to get you a turkey. And for being a really, really cheap budget shell like that, that's not terrible, all things considered. Now, have we seen better out of it? Yeah, I think we have. A little bit tighter choke is really what I think these shells might want. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Is that about what you expected to see? Were you a little surprised when way or the other hoping for better expecting worse have you tested any of these kent ultimate turkey shells and if so what has been your results with them and maybe what other setup or choke combo or something would you want to see these shells through let me know all that down below but with that being said i've got plenty more testing to get done for you guys so i'm going to get back to it as always we have the channel instagram as well as the mailbox where you can send stuff if you'd like all that information will be in the description if you're interested in it but i'm going to get back to it so i'll see y'all in the next one